channel. Um, this is a bit of a different one. I'm going to be making an album today. I love the Citrus Twist Life Crafted albums. Um, love This is my October one that I did. However, they are horrendously expensive to ship to the UK. So I want to play in them. I love doing um, Traveller's Notebook size layouts. I love doing this October daily. I'd really like to do more Traveller's Notebook um, layouts for different events. And obviously I'm on Tracy Reed's design team and she does the most beautiful Traveller's Notebook inserts. So I really wanted to have a play at them. So I decided to have a go at making my own. This is just a little mock-up I did with some fabric and paper. And this one's just a paper one I had a go with just to see if I could do it. And what I came up with, this was my first try. So this one is made with some uh, chipboard for the covers. I've chosen spotty pattern paper because um, it's 12 by 12 sheet, but it doesn't go around the whole album. So you need something that's um, the same that you can match up. Um, I've got some book plates. I'll put a book plate on the side, just like the Citrus Twist one. And then inside, I found a six ring binder, in fact, a pack of two from Craftalia, and popped that in. And this was my very first one that I did. Covered it with sticky back plastic to make it last a bit longer, but I'm not so keen on the sticky back plastic because it keeps bubbling, even though I keep rubbing it. I started this one um, doing rounded corners, but then when it came to covering it, that didn't work very well. So I won't do that in future. I'll keep it at square corners because it doesn't have to be identical. But I've made one and it went well. So I thought, let's make another one and record the process for you so you can see how I did it. But the next one I'm going to make is actually an all fabric one. And I'm just wondering, I have made it. And I was going to show you what it looked like. And I've put it to one side and I can't find it. What have I done with it? Hold on a moment. Again, I found it. So this is the one that I've made. I'm just going to give you a quick flick there so you can't see it properly. Fabric covered rather than paper covered, but you can do both. Um, so now I will move over onto creating that, showing you how I created the fabric one and how easy it is to do. I will put a link below for the items I uh, purchased here in the UK that I can do. So that's the chipboard that I used and the ring binder inserts. The book plates, I believe I got from Etsy and that was a long time ago, but they're quite easily available on Etsy. Um, one thing I will say, um, just to give you a, a sneak peek, what I will do is I'm going to be buying some corner, uh, the metal corner bits that go on here, as I just messed up very slightly on that corner there. Um, but the metal corners that I can put on all four, I think will work really well. So without any further ado, I shall move on to showing you how I created the album. So here we are with all the bits and pieces, the ring binder inserts, some spray mount fabric, um, the chipboard and some paper to put on the inside of the albums. So I've measured out the chipboard. It's um, 16 and a half centimetres wide by 23 and a half centimetres tall. And you need two of those for the front and the back. And then one piece, which is four centimetres wide and 23 and a half centimetres tall. And then the fabric, I allowed two and a half centimetres all round to allow it to a, a nice fold in. So it's um, got plenty to, to stick down. And then I used the photo mount, the spray photo mount to stick the material to the card because wet glue was going to show through because it's quite a, a pale fabric. So I was thinking of spraying the fabric, but that wasn't going to work. So <laughs> instead I spray, gave the um, chipboard a really good spray and then folded my fabric in half so I could find the centre point, get a little bit of a crease in there, and then took the very sticky um, spine piece there and just pop, plunked it down in the middle. I did not measure this. It could have possibly been a bit more accurate, a bit more level, but I think it, I'm just quite pleased with how level it came out with considering I did not get my T-square ruler out. So then turned it over and just smoothed it down to make sure that there were no bubbles in there. And in fact, it did stuck down really well. To reinforce those seams though, I decided, or the hinges, I decided I'd use some of this um, extra strong carpet tape, double-sided carpet tape, which my husband um, suggested I used actually, which was in his glue basket. Um, and all I did was I cut a very thin strip, two very thin strips of that, and then just pushed it down into that hinge area, just to make sure that when I put the paper 
onto the inside of the book that the paper is going to stick so I was a little bit concerned that the paper wouldn't stick very well down into the hinge but this uh, extra strong sticky tape as I say it's stuck down onto the fabric really well it doesn't show through on the other side and it helped the paper adhere onto the uh, inside of the cover so here I am just uh, cutting the corners here to make a nice um, fold with when I go in, I started doing it with my scissors and that was oh, just so wonky. And then I remembered that I got a rotary cutter that my son gave me for Christmas. So I went and grabbed that and used that. Um, then decided that the best way to stick that fabric down was to actually spray the fabric this time. Um, I didn't want the spray adhesive over all of that chipboard um, because of the way I'm going to be sticking the paper on. So in fact, what I did was... Um, <laughs> took the book out into the garden and held it at arm's length and sprayed the fabric. Probably not the best way to do it, but it worked for me. So then I brought it back into my desk and it folded over and folded down really nicely. Um, you will see that there is that little area there on that bottom corner where I cut it just a bit short so the um, chipboard does show through. Um, I then got my coordinating paper, which came off a paper pad that I had, and... I cut two pieces, um, 18 and a half centimetres wide by 22 and a half centimetres tall. Um, I did allow a little bit, actually a bit wider than that, to allow for an overlap to make my pattern match up in the centre of the spine. If you're using plain paper, obviously you don't have to worry about that. Um, and then I covered the back of each of those pieces of paper with double-sided, just normal double-sided tape. And when I say covered, I absolutely covered them um, and I won't make you watch all of that. So there they are all covered um, and I won't make you watch me taking all the backing paper off either. But what I did do once I've taken all the um, backing paper off the double sided tape was I put glue around the edges, just the uh, four edges of the paper to make sure that it's stuck down really well onto the fabric. Um, obviously, that glue isn't going to show through the fabric at all. Bit of extra glue because you know it doesn't harm um so i got that piece made sure i got the left hand piece not the right hand piece i don't think it would really matter took off that bit from the carpet tape and adhered this inside piece down and that went down really nicely um i mislaid my bone folder so i got this scoring thing which i had for a long time which i was going to use to get the hinge to bend but in fact I didn't really need it just gently folding it um, a few times got it to the paper into that hinge and it stuck really well to that double-sided tape so here I am just overlapping um, this paper has the word love all over it so I was just overlapping it so that um, the words continue properly and as you see I didn't need to actually um, use a bone folder to get that hinge to the paper to stick down into that hinge so there we are, that's the book, the basic album done. You've got your front back cover and your spine and I was really pleased with how that was looking. So the next thing to do was to put on the book plate. Now I got out my um, crocodile and of course it's not big enough, it doesn't reach far enough down. So I had to resort to the old silent setter, a misnomer if ever there was one. Um, and it took a few hits with that to uh, you see everything's jumping <laughs> to get the holes. But I did manage to uh, get through the chipboard and the fabric and the paper and then dived into my old stash of brads to use the brads to fit this book plate on. Now, on some of my albums, my husband's actually used a rivet gun for me to rivet these on. But that does leave a nasty, <laughs> nasty, but big clumpy bit inside, which I didn't want. So I decided that brads would be nicer. Then tried to slip in the piece of card and it was too tight. So released it a little bit, popped the card in, tightened up the brads again, and there's the book plate all done. And was really pleased with how that looked. So the last thing to do is to put in the six ring binder mechanism. So I bought this from Craft, uh, well they're Craft Delia ones, but I actually got them off Amazon because it was next day delivery. Whereas if I'd ordered from Craft Delia, from Spain to the UK, it actually takes longer than getting stuff from scrapbook.com from the States to the UK. It takes about three weeks to get here from Craft Delia. So I ordered it on Amazon. Again, I was going to use my crocodile, um, but it doesn't reach far enough down. So I used the big bite um, here I am just checking how far in I need to put the um, 
binder mechanism and I measured it and it was about the edge of it was about one centimeter in from the hinge so I just measured one centimeter in from the hinge top and bottom and then lined up my binder mechanism to those little marks and then popped a pencil into the hole just to make there we go it's lining it up pencil into the hole to make the mark of where I need to make my holes so out comes the silent setter again to make the holes for the binder mechanism I needed a different size hole a bigger hole for this one and only needed the small hole maker for the book plate but this one needed the bigger hole so here I go it was a very hot day when I was making this and it's still very hot over here in the UK and I work in the conservatory it was about 32 degrees in the conservatory I have got portable air conditioning unit on um, which just blows cold air directly on me but it's not particularly potent so it was still quite warm um, I do struggle in the summer to uh, work in the conservatory and then in the winter it's too cold so I'm never satisfied <laughs> I'm lucky to have this space actually so it's nice I do I, I do enjoy working even in the heat um, so this portable air conditioning unit works quite well so this ring binder mechanism came with screws. So you could just pop the screws in and then you just need a screwdriver to tighten it up and it fits in really well. It was much, um, sort of much meatier uh, or stronger binder mechanism than I thought. I thought it looked plastic, I'm um, looking at it on my Amazon and I was really pleased. It's a metal one and it's really nice and chunky and I think it's gonna hold a lot of pages, which is good because I make a lot of pages. I'm planning on making a lot of pages. So there we go, all finished. So I grabbed one of my Citrus Twist um, page protectors and just popped it in just to check that it did fit because I hadn't done that before and yes, it did. I'm really pleased with that. I can make um, outside the page protector pages in there as well and just use my single hole punch to punch the holes. Um, say I want to get some uh, corner protectors to go on there so we'll see what happens with that so there's my two travelers notebook albums really pleased with them I hope you've enjoyed this video today um, if you have please give me a thumbs up if you don't already subscribe please subscribe I'd really appreciate that and if you'd like to leave a comment below please do so and I look forward to seeing you again in my next video bye for now so I was just going to finish off um, voicing over the out making the album and these corner protectors arrived in the post. Got them off Amazon. So I thought I'd just show you how it looks having put them on. So you now can't see where I messed up very slightly on the corners. They're really nicely done and they go really nicely with the book plate. So that is now my finished album there. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll be back again with another video very soon. Bye for now.